I was going through my component bins trying to find a replacement relay and found this circuit board assembly. I actually recognized this board as it was from my GE microwave that I have had for close to 10 years. And what broke in that microwave actually was not the electronics, it was the door opening mechanism. The plastics used must have degraded over the years, and the push mechanism eventually broke off, and the plastics became so brittle. I initially glued the broken off pushers back, and a few months later they broke off again from another spot. Anyway, I had to throw out the microwave, of course, I had kept all the electronics before I recycled the metal case. Anyway, that is what this board is. My original plan was to take this 12 volt relay, but it doesn't seem to be the right size. So I was about to put it back and continue searching for another relay, and then I found something a little bit unusual about this board. Can you spot it? Well, you see, we have a piezo electric buzzer here, by the look of it, and then we have a. Wait a minute. You can see here is actually the piezo electric buzzer, and that's this black component that is mounted on the circuit board. That's the actual piezo electric buzzer. You can see. It. So then what is this buzzer here? Clearly this one looks like a buzzer, but it's not used as the buzzer. Then I remember that the GE microwave also claimed to be able to detect when the food is done cooking. And the way this is typically done is via sensing the humidity content in the air. So this must be a piezoelectric humidity sensor. Piezoelectric humidity sensors do exist, and they are typically constructed by coating the piezoelectric crystal with some hygroscopic material. And the idea is when the absorbed moisture content changes, the mass changes as well. So the resonant oscillation frequency would also change. But those sensors are usually tiny and look nothing like what we have here. This one literally looks just like a regular piezoelectric buzzer. I can open it up and you can probably see it better. So let's do that. And you can see that I just took it out from the case. It literally looks just like your regular buzzer. Now if you take a look at the connector, you will see that the piezoelectric sensor is actually connected via these traces, and this is directly routed to this vertical board. So clearly this board is for humidity detection. And if you take a closer look at the board, you will see that there is only one active component, which is the LM358 op amp. So the circuitry here is way too simple to support an active humidity sensor. So just by the simple circuitry here, it doesn't really seem that this humidity sensor is using the variable oscillation frequency method based on the hygroscopic absorption. Anyway, I was quite puzzled, so I started doing some research. Then I came across this patent, Humidity Detection Assembly for Microwave Oven. And if you look at the assignee of the patent, it is the MIDI group which is also printed on the circuit board here. You can see it is printed right here. So I'm pretty sure that this patent holds the key to the understanding of the circuitry. Let's actually take a look at the abstract. I'm not going to read it out loud word by word, as it will be very boring, but I'm going to leave it on the screen here so you can see for yourself. And also I'm going to leave the link in the video description below so you can check it out later. So to summarize this description, it seems that all they're relying on is the dependency of the variation of the charges the sensor carries according to the humidity of the environment. Now, at this point you may ask, there are already a lot of these kind of off-the-shelf humidity sensors out there. Why do they want to use a piezoelectric sensor to do that? Well, it all comes down to cost. For consumer electronics, every penny counts. As these microwave ovens are massively produced, if you could save a dime on the sensor and its supporting circuitry, you are talking about huge profit for the manufacturer given the sheer volume of these consumer products. Well, there are other more precise methods for measuring humidity, you can't beat the price of a piezo sensor and a LM358. And if you take a look at the reference design circuitry described in the patent, you will see that it pretty much matches what we see here on the board. All it has are these two non-inverting op amps. Unfortunately, we're missing some key components I wasn't able to power it up, as you can see we're missing this keypad assembly here. Anyway, so I think the next best thing to do is to desolder this daughter board from the main board here, and I think I can power it up independently. So let me actually do that. Alright, I just desoldered the detection board from the main control board, and I had soldered on a few wires, so I can hook up the power supply and an oscilloscope to observe the signal. Now here are a couple of pictures of the humidity detection board before I soldered the wires on, and I had to bust out the pins earlier. 
If you take a look at the components on the board, you'll see that the circuit design matches up with what is specified in the patent pretty well. There are some differences. For instance, the piezoelectric sensor is connected via these two inductors, but everything else looks pretty much the same. I had buzzed out the pin connections a little bit earlier, and these two wires connect to the piezoelectric sensor, as you can see here. The green wire next is indirectly connected to the pin 20 of the microcontroller. The microcontroller used is an MC96F6432, and in this 44-pin package, pin 20 is an analog input pin. And this pin the green wire is connected to also connects to the piezoelectric sensor via a resistor. It samples directly from the piezo sensor's output, so I assume this signal is used for a comparison purpose within the microcontroller, and for our demonstration purpose today, we're not going to use this pin. And then we have the power supply input, which are the next two pins. We will use 5 volts for the supply voltage here. And finally, we have the green wire at the end, that's the output. And it connects to the pin 21 of the microcontroller, which is another analog input pin. Alright, so let me connect this to a bench power supply and we'll take a closer look. Alright, I just hooked everything up. As you can see here, I'm probing directly right now across the piezo sensor. As you can see, these are probed at the bottom of these two inductors, which are connected directly to the sensor itself. And here on the oscilloscope, you can see that's the waveform we're observing. Now, this is a little bit misleading, as this is actually some interference from the power supply. If I, for example, remove the power supply, you can see that we're actually not measuring anything. And if I tap on the piezo sensor, you can see we are getting some response, which is typical for a piezoelectric sensor here. So, sorry, just to move that in the picture here, you can see that if I tap on the sensor, you will see the sensor generates some signals here. And let me hook up the power supply here. Again, besides the noise you see on the screen here, by the way, these are roughly 60 hertz signal, as they are actually from the mains interference, as I mentioned earlier. But if I tap on the sensor, you can see that the sensor indeed works. So there's not too much to see here, but that's just a basic behavior of a piezoelectric sensor. The mains frequency interference is not going to be a problem, as the circuit is going to filter out that frequency. As you see on the diagram here, by the way, this is directly from the patent, we do have some filter at input side, so that the mains frequency is actually going to be filtered out here. Now let me change the oscilloscope to measure the output directly. So remember, this pin, the last one, is the output. And by the way, the oscilloscope input is set as DC coupling, so you can see the slow varying signal here. At the moment, there isn't too much to see from the output, but the circuit is indeed working. If I tap on the sensor, for example, you can see some drastic changes in the output amplitude. But beyond that, there's not too much going on here. Now, there is a diode at the op amp's output to rectify the signal so that the output transition is smooth, as you can see here. Now, you no longer have the edges. It's a very smooth signal here. If you take a look at the diagram here, you can see this is the output diode here. And of course, if you look at the circuit here, you can identify, I'm not sure if you can see this, that's the diode at the output. What I'm going to do next is to put the sensor on a stand so we can bring in some hot water and see what happens when there is moisture. So let me actually first put it on the stand here. Alright, and here is a cup of hot water. And let me put it underneath here. Let's see what happens. And you can see that we immediately see the trace started jumping up. Let me actually change the time base a little bit. You can see that when there's a sufficient amount of moisture in the air, which happens when water is close to its boiling point during cooking, the output from the detector essentially goes positive. And if I remove the cup of water, you will see that the output essentially drops back down to zero. And let me bring the water again so we can see the transition. Of course, the water is a little bit cooler now, so let's see here. 
Yeah, as you can see, the transition is still there. So basically, when the moisture is high, you can see that we are able to detect that signal from the output of the amplifier. So this is how this patented humidity detection works using a piezoelectric sensor. Let's actually see what we can see if we measure directly across the piezoelectric sensor instead of the output. So let me turn off the power supply here so that we don't have any noise here. So now, instead of measuring the output, let's measure directly across the piezoelectric sensor here. So that's the sensor you can see. And let me increase the sensitivity here. Let me bring in the hot water again. And you can see essentially we have the same behavior. So definitely there is a change in the charge on this disk. And with the humidity increasing, you can see we have a positive signal out of the piezo sensor itself. Where if I remove it, you can see that we are essentially going back down. Interestingly, you can see right now the output is negative, but gradually you can see that is gradually approaching back to zero again. Now I'm actually curious to see if this sensor is just a regular buzzer, or there is something special to this sensor itself. So for that I'm bringing in another regular buzzer here. You can see this is just a regular buzzer. And let's actually hook up to the buzzer and see if we can observe similar behaviors here. So there's some interference from the environment. Let's not worry about that. All right, I had to hook up the buzzer to the oscilloscope. Let's put it water here. Of course, the water is probably getting pretty cold now, but you can see that we are still able to register the same behavior. In fact, right now it's overshot quite a bit. And you can see this variation in the output here. So if I remove the water again, it will eventually drop down and gradually approaching that equilibrium. So clearly this is the same behavior as what we observed with the humidity detection sensor here. And just to double check, I'm going to swap out this sensor with this buzzer that we just tested to make sure that it also works with the circuit here. And now let's put that hot water underneath. Let's see what we get. And you can see the output is pretty much the same as what we had with the stock sensor. So indeed, this is a piezoelectric sensor here. And just to prove that the sensor used in that humidity detection circuit is a standard piezoelectric sensor, I have hooked it up to a signal generator. So let's enable the output. And you can hear the buzzing. So that further proves that this indeed is a standard piezoelectric sensor. And now you know how this patented humidity detection method works. It is rather simple, yet it's quite reliable and effective. Quite clever. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.